Um, uh, yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, what happens more. next? Drugs. He's really, really rad. He's just... He met Proop's dad. He's just... You'll know him from Greece. Him and Nicolas Cage have both expressed the interest in returning for a potential face-off too. Oh yeah. It's Proop and Merce Travolta-thon. Do you want to start? Well, Tom. Yeah, sure. Why welcome. Not? Welcome, everybody, to the Proop and Merce Travolta-thon. I'm your host, Harris Murphy. I'm your host, Ethan Proops. We just watched Speed Kills. This film's very interesting because it's released in the same year as Gotti and it's mm -hmm. pretty much exactly the same as Gotti. It's like Gotti mixed with Gotti. You can very easily draw parallels to Gotti, but you can also very easily draw parallels to John Travolta himself. If you switch the boats with planes and if you switch all the women that he cheats on his wife with, with men that he cheats on his wife with. It seems like a very low production value. It's it's like kind of a Sharknado type production value, like a Birdemic almost vibe to it. How poor the lighting is, how poor all of those kind of technical aspects about it are. But n not only that, the acting, the dialogue, the, the writing, the pacing. The editing. Uh, the the editing, editing in this movie is ass. The characters that it portrays in this film, these kind of middle-aged to old men who race speedboats. It's like a way of glamorizing them to make them as their target audience feel as if, oh, wow, what we're doing with our speedboats is really sexy and we're going to get all of the women and eventually die of lung cancer. And that's what this film is really for. Especially if you consider that this is 2018. So John mm -hmm. Travolta is like a decrepit, withering old man at this point. He's no grease. He's no Saturday Night Fever Travolta. He's Speed Kills Travolta. Profit margin. Johnny Walker. Time to synopsis the plot. So this movie starts with John Travolta being shot and dying. Hey, ben. A man yep, walks yep. into John Travolta's speedboat shop and he's like, I've got to buy a speedboat for my boss. I'm looking for Ben Aronoff. And then John Travolta remembers, he's like, I'm Ben. Worst delivery of a line ever. <laughs> That's a fucking great line. John Travolta's like, I don't owe your boss anything. And then John Travolta drives off. And then this other guy who is working for the guy that comes in says, hey, Ben. And then shoots him in his car. Cut to 25 years later when John Travolta... Earlier. Was... Earlier. We cut to 25 years earlier. He is still the same withering, decrepit, ugly Travolta. John Travolta is in Florida and he watches a speedboat race and he's like, that's what I want to invest my money in. And eventually that ends up in him getting tied up with the mob and it eventually all catches up to John Travolta. Um, he divorces his wife. He gets married again. He dies. And then at the end of the movie, we see pretty much the exact same scene we saw at the start except in a different context. It's not effective at all. I was sat by the telly. We can begin with this scene because that's the thing. They use the exact same scene. I don't think they, they cut it down. If they do cut it down, it's very unnoticeable. They just play the exact same scene again. We get I'm and, Ben twice. I'm Ben. You know, usually if they're going to do something like that, it's going to be like a reveal that, oh, you, you know, we've subverted your expectation here a little bit because we didn't see him... Uh, actually get shot we just see a guy pull a gun on him and shoot but then in the last scene it shows oh yeah he did get shot but that was the expectation anyway so there was nothing added by showing him actually like crawl out of his car and bleed out on the floor mm -hmm. it's another kind of gotti thing isn't it like bookending the film with something strange and him... there's narration there's a little bit of narration yeah. in there as well but it's not that sort of gotti style where john travolta is talking to the camera it's that very cringeworthy stereotypical sort of so i bet you're wondering how i got in this situation where it literally freeze frames on what has happened and it's usually a very lazy freeze frame where you can still sort of see motion blurs and things like that and then just yeah. sort of adds completely pointless dialogue that could have very easily been in the scene itself but i guess they just forgot to put it there and had to do it in post Shelly cats real estate law yep he was a small time lawyer yeah the freeze frames are so terrible like every single time one happened i'd think wait as my internet cut out 
and then John Travolta would start speaking. You know, all the audio mixing and the levels and everything just sounds very amateurish. And it sounds like an episode of Travolta-thon. It's it's like me and you have edited this film on iMovie. It did feel very iMovie because iMovie has that basic freeze frame. This had like stock, like suspense strings in it at one point. I was like, I've definitely heard those like as a garage band default sound effect. Piss off! He gets into the speedboat with Ellen DeGeneres and he's speeding along. He's like, this is the greatest thing ever. Big grin, big the fanatic grin. You know, I thought this was probably the best scene in the film. No, no, it definitely wasn't. It definitely wasn't. That's complete bullshit. But I just like to see John Travolta smile. I didn't like that scene at all. Like, I'm going to keep coming back to this. The way it was edited was completely poor. You had John Travolta steering, Mm -hmm. and then you'd cut to his face, and then you'd (laughs) cut to a very similar shot of him steering, which may also be the same shot. It doesn't make the speedboat race more intense. It just completely takes you out of it. DJ Khaled. There's that party where his son's like, Dad, come play catch with me, his 25-year-old son. And then he's like, no, I'm going to do adult things, little boy, son. And then his son is very forlorn that his dad doesn't want to play catch with him in this scenario where, you know, no self-respecting adult would go and do that. It's supposed to be showing that he's like neglecting of his son. But in that scenario where he's thrown this party so he can sort out business and stuff. I don't think there's any expectation that he's going to stand around playing catch. Um, I think you're wrong, Ethan Proops. The people in this party seem to be wearing kippers. So I assumed this was some sort of bar mitzvah. I didn't see any kippers. I didn't associate any of that with the happening. I bet you try to block that all out of your mind, you anti-Semite. John Travolta doesn't know the mob boss is here. And you're also forgetting... That John Travolta hasn't arranged this party. It was his wife, and she is pissed off because John Travolta turns up late, which we know oh, yeah. is because he was having an affair. So it's not some party that John Travolta has arranged. It is simply somebody's Jewish party. Uh, what's up, gamers? I just want to add: there's no kippers in this scene. There's nothing Jewish. There's no Jewish hats. There's no Jewish celebration. There's no Jewish frozen yogurt. It's all just not Jewish. I've just completely made this point up. Harris, you loony. Not only did you hallucinate kippers, but then upon realizing that aren't kippers, you put a clip in to say that it's not Jewish anymore with a massive The Star of David in it. You must have blocked that Star of David out of your mind, you anti-Semite. In American society, a father and his son should play catch. Like, this is in every movie with a father and a son that is set in the United States, they're like, hey, son, catch the football. And then they throw the football and the son catches it. And they're like, I'm so proud of you, my little boy. You caught the damn football. Let's say it's my bar mitzvah. And you come round, and, you know, we're tossing the ball around in the yard uh, with, you know, Harry Maman, Talha Khan Israel, Umar Sawa, Alex Wright, Aaron Chung, Max Beck Jones, you know, Mr. Brandwood. There's all this... Uh, adult shenanigans going on in the <laughs> in the other part of the garden dad proops walks on by and i'm like hey dad would you like to join in with the uh, game of catch i'm having with my computing classroom and he says nah would you really think whoa michael proops what a terrible father now i understand uh why proop is the way he is In terms of the father-son relationship, the only insight into the floor is the sorrowful, puppy-eyed look that his son gives him on his refusal to play catch this one time. Travolta's son decides to get in a car accident. His son is horrifically mutilated. He's comatose. This guy is comatose. This guy is comatose. And John Travolta, uh, you know, cycles around... Uh, to the hospital (laughs) he doesn't do that and uh he's like son you better pull through this we gotties are strong you're an aeronaut we fight back we do not let any illness or ailment give us around apart from cancer no one gets cancer in this movie what Yeah, he leaves his wife. He doesn't even fight for custody of his kids or anything. He never sees them again, except one meeting with his son. He says, you know, I I made a life for myself. I came from nothing, and you can do the same thing. Here's $100,000. 
And it's the complete opposite of what he's saying. It's very Donald Trump, small loan of a million dollars kind of thing. Travolta says, he took the money and ran, which I thought that's ironic because he's disabled. And then he falls in love with the King of Jordan's girlfriend. They frame this dancing sequence as if he is falling in love with her, but she is paying little to no attention to him. She's just dancing on her own. So it's very creepy yeah. and male gazy where John Travolta is there like, like it's not face. even that though they don't even show him being really like that they just change the music they do that thing where there's there's the they're having a little dance a little wee boogie and then all of a sudden it goes into slow-mo slow and they fade out the music and they put this real emotional uh falling in love music on john travolta's not really glaring at this woman significantly there's this one scene where he takes off his wedding ring and he ties it to a balloon and then he lets it go. And he's you can see a bit of a, huh, a moment in his brain where he's like, I've just learned that the weight of my wedding ring is less than the buoyancy of this party balloon. And it reminded me of that time when I tied a copy of REP to a balloon. Welcome to the launch of the Proof of Earth Sky EP project. <laughs> <laughs> it was the exact same look in his eyes, the exact same kind of discovery of weight and buoyancy that I had personally experienced. How do you feel? I feel elated. So that was probably my, my second favourite scene in the film, just because I could relate to it so much. Then we get to definitely my favourite scene in the film, which is Stormy Weather The big boat speed race. Boat race, yeah. like total ass awful cgi waves and if you look you can see the figures in the boat very clearly are not john travolta and ellen degeneres uh, and the stunts aren't even that insane he's racing against the mob boss's nephew who were introduced to earlier in the film but he's played by a different actor it's got that gotti problem where sometimes they recast and sometimes they don't and it's very hard to keep track of who's who i don't have anything to say about it we think he's died who's gonna make it a beer by now and then his new wife, who isn't his wife at this point, he sort of met her and he went to the, her stables, which is also very significant because that means this is another film where John Travolta falls in love with a horse girl. Upon realisation that this man who asked her to come here is dead, she sort of realises how much she meant to him, even though she barely knows him and he's like triple her age. They shag with the, the door left open. Bruh. <laughs> Throughout this film, John Travolta has got this beta male cuck ass lawyer. He grins all the time. Uh, he's very much a little bitch boy running around doing all his errands for him. He says, can I have a 5% cut? And John Travolta says, 3%. Okay. You're too damn easy. <laughs> That's my new client discount. This one scene where a woman's like, oh, John Travolta. So shall I call you the animal? And then he's like, oh, you could call me an animal. And I do really think that this man is a complete soy boy, I think you for lack of mean. a better term. I'm being a bit mean. I'm being a little I bit harsh, but I'm just playing out for comedic value. He was just I'm kind just... of an incompetent lawyer. His face looks very familiar. So I was like, I'm going to go on IMDb and see what this man is from. And everything on IMDb I had not seen before. So if you have seen this man here, email us at uh, proofamurf at gmail.com. The overarching motif of this film is... The cigarette. There's hardly any scenes where John Travolta is not smoking a cigarette. And this is to reflect the fact that John Travolta's boat is called the cigarette. It really is quite a perfect analogy for this film. It's like they're trying to make it appear very sexy and refined when really all it is is cancer. That's a good analogy. Um, yeah. Please add more to this point because this is going to be following a title and it ought to have more said about it yeah it is a very good point ethan you've really hit the nail on the head there about this movie which is called speed kills and stars john travolta that's a very good analogy ethan proops about this movie speed kills i think that's a very good point that you've raised there it's definitely going to be its own title in this video about the movie speed kills good job ethan i think you've hit the nail right on the head there with that one good job nice work Nice job, team. <laughs> That's one bad mamma jamma.
I want to talk about more stinky editing choices that they made. I don't know if you noticed this, but the slow mo, the slow mo, the lazy slow mo. Shin is in popular YouTube channel, The Slow Mo Guys. Yes. More like the Homo Guys. They've not increased the frame rate to make it look smoother. So you've got this very choppy slow mo that just completely cuts what little tension there was in the scene. I'm surprised this film had a budget of 15 million. I guess they spent that all on the boats, I guess. Or John Travolta. Yeah, they spent it all on John Travolta and the speedboats and then um, hired someone on Fiverr to do the editing or, and, and everything else, the writing etc etc right so i also noticed there's several bits of stock footage the first one i noticed not that long into a movie stock footage of like girls asses like walking by a pool and it doesn't reflect this scene at all because they're on a beach and this pool is like like behind a hotel it's just this stock footage that they've added to kind of like add some sex appeal to this to this movie which is completely lacking sex appeal because John Travolta is a shriveled up, disgusting old man. So that kind of throws you out of the film. Would you agree, Ethan Proops, on that point? Yeah, I think you really hit the nail on the head. I think you really <laughs> hit that one home. Got four runs with that point there, Harris. Uh, there's a scene where the lawyer friend is talking on the phone and you are watching him talk on the phone. But the audio that you are hearing is on the other end of the phone call, like muffled audio. And we don't hear what the other person is saying. If we are using the diegetic audio that is in the scene, it would not be muffled. So why have they muffled it? How could you make that mistake? How yeah. could you? How could you? How? What kind of thought process went into that? Not even in our wildest dreams could we have come up with something so daft to do to a film. Neither would the people making this film, I guess, because this is another thing, like the party, that I have accidentally completely made up. The audio in this scene is fine, if not a little quiet, so just ignore that point. Yeah, okay. And that isn't even the most boggling choice in the movie, because I've got one that completely and utterly trumps that tidbit. When John Travolta and the lawyer first find out about the illegal activities, the marijuana that is being shipped in their speedboats, John Travolta says, This is how you go to jail, man. But it's very clearly dubbed over. To make matters worse, I don't think it's even John Travolta that says it. And this is what we get. This is how you go to jail, man. And it's like when he's walking away. And it's such, it's, it's such a stupid line that doesn't add anything. Because they've already established they're, they're discovering the marijuana. I do distinctly remember that it being so jarring. We do not condone beating Arabs. He tells a very funny joke at the party. A woman with a tattoo of Elvis on each thigh. She lifts up her skirt and then John Travolta says, I don't know who the twins are, but the guy in the middle is definitely Willie Nelson. Yeah, Willie. It was yes. a penis. Or she just had a vagina that resembles the face of Willie Nelson. I can't think off the top of my head who that is. Did he not do like the Battle of Trafalgar Square? Ah, American musician. It's this guy. Yeah, he looks a bit of like a vagina, if you ask me. I've got nothing more to say about speed kills, I don't think. How about you? Yeah, I've got a lot more to say. Um, yeah, so that was speed kills. Oh, live in the sun. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of a summary. I think you're probably going to give it... Are you going to give it a three out of ten, Harris? Uh, I think you're going to give it a four. That's my that's my final guess. The thing about this film is it's pretty much gutty, but worse, but better. So your final score is? A three. Well, I think this movie is uh, incompetently made. It's incompetently written, directed, edited, acted. But in terms of what rating I'm going to give the final film, I'm thinking a one. I'm going to also changed my score to a one because when I was coming up with my score I forgot to remember what it was like to watch the film and we also have to give it some sort of something in terms of our Travolta score out of 10 bald no. Travolta heads I don't think John Travolta deserves too many money for this but however there is that one scene where he's grinning on the speedboat and for that reason I'm going to give him 10 Travolta heads five pounds okay Proop Ethan Proops next week what film shall we watch uh, look who's talking. All right. Sayonara. And remember, guys, speed kills. Until next time. See you next time. Look. That means this is another film where John Travolta falls in love with a horse.